Hello everybody, welcome back to Dirty Bird TV. I'm your host, James Mellinger, also known as 2A Cali Guy, here on YouTube. Today, I'm taking a look at some products by FMK. FMK is a handgun manufacturer based right here in California, like me, and like Dirty Bird Industries. What you're looking at in front of you is all of the color options that are available as a California compliant handgun. That's right, in California, we have a thing known as a handgun roster, the safe handgun roster. And if a manufacturer has a gun they've submitted for testing, it passes all the testing, it's approved, and it is put on the handgun roster, and then they change the color. Say they change the color from this ODG to this blue, it is no longer safe because the color has been changed, it must be resubmitted. What you're looking at is all of the options that you have in California when it comes to picking up a Gen 2 pistol. I'm gonna go over some of the things that I like, some of the things I don't like. Let's get started. First things first, I'm thinking cheap Glock clone. Wrong. There's actually quite a few things on the uh, Gen 2. While similar to a Glock, they're not interchangeable with the Glock and in my opinion, some of them are better. The back strap that we see here on the FMK pistol actually helps reduce felt recoil. Now, I thought that this was kind of a gimmick at first. I did not believe that it would in any way help reduce felt recoil, but it does. Especially for me, you can see that it fits my hand extremely well. And what this does for me is it provides a more back recoil rather than a muzzle flipping recoil. I definitely appreciate that. There is some texturing here on the inside, which makes no difference to me as my hand does not actually contact that area. I do like the finger grooves that we see here. Much like the Glock 19, these pistols weigh about 23 ounces. So very similar, very similar in shape, very similar in size, just to give you an idea of what they're like. The California compliant model has something that the non-California compliant model does not. It has the loaded chamber indicator, which can be seen on the back of the slide right there. That little red dot will protrude when a round is in the chamber. As you can see, Freedom and Liberty is engraved on it, as well as on all of their pistol. They put, thank you, armed forces. So they do support our armed forces, which I think is great. Other things on these California compliant versions, a magazine disconnect. Now this is a double action only trigger. And when you remove the magazine, it will not function because of the magazine disconnect. The magazine disconnect also prevents the magazines from dropping free. In this case, you have to strip the pistols out. I am not a big fan of that, but FMK has a solution. The trigger that comes standard in this Gen 3 model here is known as the fast action or the elite trigger. It is a much nicer trigger. It's a two stage with a very short reset. Extremely crisp. Go ahead and show you guys. That's the take up. We're at the wall. Okay, let's go ahead and show off this reset. And there we go. So a little bit gritty, little bit, little bit spongy, but all in all, it is a big improvement over the California compliant double action only trigger we see in the Gen 2. At the time of this video, you can pick up the trigger that you see in the Gen 3 for 60 to $65. It only requires removing two pins, drops in, and not only does it give you a better trigger, it addresses the magazine issue, eliminates the magazine disconnect, and lets your magazines drop free like that. I really like that. In terms of negatives, there's not much negative to be said about these pistols, especially in the price point. 
when they are on sale, you can find them for just under $300 US, give or take 300 and under. The sites on them are Glock style sites. It is the only thing that they share that is the same as the Glock. Now they're not identical, they are just similar Glock style sites. And if you know Glock standard sites, you, most likely you've replaced yours too. So there's a lot of aftermarket options. There's no reason why we have to stay with this in particular site. I don't like it, I take it off, I put a new one on it. That's my opinion. These, some of them had a little bit of a quality control issue and the site was slightly off center. Not a big fan of that. If I were picking one up, I would be sure to line it up and check to make sure that I had a nice clear sight picture. And that goes to Glocks and any other gun too. Obviously something you should check. It's not only specific to FMK. The FMK pistols added a lot of, FMK added a lot of upgrades to their Gen 3. They take user feedback very well and integrating that into the Gen 3, that can be seen. Things like these slide serrations here that we get providing a much more grippy slide, allowing you to rack the slide easier, they can be seen in the Gen 3. Another thing that you can see in the Gen 3 is we have this highly polished stainless steel barrel. Nice touch. Optics ready slide. As you can see, the slide has been squared off in the back portion of it, and it is optics ready. What I mean by that is underneath of this mounting plate here that we see, there is two different patterns, the RMR and the doctor pattern, allowing you to use a red dot like the Burst Fast Fire 3, Vortex Viper or Venom, as well as the Trijicon RMR style red dots. You do not need any adapter plates in order to put it on there. Also, they have redesigned the slide stop, which can be seen the polymer version on the Gen 2 and an all metal one on the Gen 3. So like I said, they take user feedback very well and we can see that all of that feedback has gone into making a much better product on Gen 3. I took both versions, the Gen 3 and the Gen 2, out to the range to do some shooting. I shot 150 rounds through each one of the pistols with no major malfunctions. I did abuse the slide stop, using it to drop the slide over and over, as well as allowing the pistol to run empty and lock itself open. I had no issues with the polymer slide stop, I just thought it was worth mentioning. In a nutshell, with the price point on sale of around 300 or less, do I think they are a good value? Absolutely. In a nutshell, I'm gonna wrap this up and give you my opinion. I think these pistols are an extreme value, especially considering their $300 price point when on sale. You really do get a lot of pistol. They punch above their weight class, in my opinion. If I were in a free state, I would obviously go with the Gen 3 because it is optics ready. In California, we are not able to get these without buying them private party, so we are stuck with the Gen 2s. Even the Gen 2, after getting used to the trigger, was easy to shoot. I started to shoot faster, keeping more of my shots on target. I had no major malfunctions, running 150 rounds through each one of the pistols. All in all, I thought the thing that would fail first would be the slide stop. Being that it's polymer, I had no issues with it. The trigger, it took some getting used to. Knowing that $65, I can get this trigger, eliminate not only the double action trigger, but also get rid of the magazine disconnect. To me, eliminating the magazine disconnect alone, just so that my mags will drop free, that is a big thing. I would really like, to see that happen.
That's all I have for today. So go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe, check the bell to be notified as I will be doing a 500 round, 1000 round update on these. Our Vortex rep is extremely awesome. The Vortex rep offered to provide an optic that I will be putting on this and doing a follow-up review. Don't forget, comment down below, do you wanna see a follow-up review on the Gen 2? Would you like to know how it holds up? Does 500 rounds, 1,000 rounds, so on and so forth, if I have any issues going forward? Perhaps I will drop my own kit into this and eliminate that trigger magazine disconnect and you guys would like to see a follow-up of that. I have to say a big thank you for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.